Hello there, YouTube. So, uh, this is a booktube video. Um, I know, I'm actually going back to booktube for a moment. To the new people who have subscribed, because there's about 100 of you, I'm aware that uh, that you've subscribed following the discussions on Dungeons & Dragons, the OGL, and uh, all of that. Um, I will be talking more about um, D&D and tabletop RPGs in the future, but that's not the only thing I talk about on this channel. Uh, this channel talks about various different things, from tabletop RPGs to video games to novels uh, to TV shows and everything in between. It's kind of a geek media channel. So that's what I talk about. Occasionally I'll talk about uh, current affairs and politics, and you know, that'll be in involved as well, depending on if it's relevant to the thing I'm talking about. Yes, uh, the uh, the OGL, I can make more videos about it. I can make more videos about the uh, the Backlash. Um, Wizards of the Coast are lying bastards, we know this. Um, more people have made videos. Honestly, they've done a better job of making videos than I could. I'll link a couple of them in the description if you really care. And um, you can uh, you can hear a bit more about that. But I want to move on, I want to talk about other stuff. So, hopefully, you'll give this video a chance. And um, you'll maybe check out a couple of the other videos, because... I've got thousands of views on those D&D videos, but I've got other videos that I would very much like to see people checking out just to see what they think. Um, some of the, the book recommendation videos, for example, like um, like my uh, my dozen books uh, that are short reads. Uh, that's a recent video I did uh, that are all shorter than, uh, combined than War and Peace. An idea of, as to how to get into reading various different um, various different types of fiction. Anyway, this video is um, this video is going to be somewhat of a rant. It's uh, it's top five, and yeah, it's going to uh, it's going to piss off quite a few bookish people because this is the top five most pretentious pseudo intellectual books for pseudo intellectual morons. That's what this is. I. I'm sick of seeing these pretentious novels given so much praise. I've taken notes. There are a lot of um, pseudo-intellectual pricks who will sit there and claim that they are you know, well-read intellectual people because they read difficult books. You don't read difficult books. You read pretentious, narcissistic nonsense, uh, postmodernist abstract shite. And you think it makes you intelligent because other people don't understand what the fuck it's going on about. The reason no one understands what's going on about is because it doesn't have an important message to send. It is entirely selling on the hope that some people will pick it up and pretend they get it so that they can lord it over the people who admit they don't. That's, that's what these books are all about. At least some of them. There's a few... Um, there's a few exceptions on my list. So, I'm going to start, and uh, they get worse as they get along. So, I'm going to start with my number five choice, which is The Fifth Season. This is by N.K. Jemison. This book is the first in a series of books, every single entry of which has won the Hugo Award. I think this can... Uh, can go some way to explain why I consider the Hugo Award to be a complete pile of shit. If this book, and every sequel to this book, can win the Hugo Award, the Hugo Award is worth about as much as my toilet roll after a heavy use. The fifth season is marketed as a, um, a dying earth sci-fi fantasy um book that it's it's fantasy in the in the offset but it's actually sci-fi hidden under the layers that's the way it's marketed it's actually a YA um dystopia that's what it is it's it's another YA dystopian novel uh, that's just marketed to adults not only is it a YA dystopia it is a woke as fuck YA dystopia that spends all of its uh, all of its energy all of its time pushing feminist bullshit, very thin allegories for slavery and race relations and 
racism in general. And it's very, very clear that N.K. Jemison is writing what is basically a political rant in the form of a novel. She thinks she's smarter than she is. She's not. She's just very angry and an, a political agitator. And the reason that it's popular on BookTube is because BookTube is sickeningly left-wing, as I've described in the past. The people who like this like it because they think they should like it, because it's the correct political stance, and therefore it has to be good, right? Because it's it's telling the message. It's absolute shite. It goes, it goes so far as to try to be avant-garde by using the second-person perspective, which is a perspective never used in literature. The only exception to this would be interactive media, such as video games, where second-person is appropriate. Or choose-your-own-adventure books, where you are making choices uh, that direct the story. So you are an active part of the story, so the story being a second-person makes sense. Those are the only examples I know of where second person has been used in any kind of media. And there's a good reason for that. It doesn't work. The, The whole purpose behind the fifth season being written like this was to put you directly into the situation so that then she could use particular language to push her politics onto you. It's now not he or they or I in the book. It's you. The book is telling you what you think, what you feel. So you don't get to decide. You're being told what to think and feel. It's manipulative and pathetic, and it's extremely obvious that it's doing it. She did the same thing in one of her novellas. She wrote that in much the same way, and it was just as pathetic and try-hard and manipulative and politically pandering as this book. Only this one's a full-size novel. The fifth season is a steaming pile of shit, and I don't understand why so many booktubers that I watch have praised it, other than they either didn't read it, or they read it, saw that it was woke as fuck, and went, oh, the politics is correct, therefore it's perfect. The Hugo Award, worthless. I will now consider the Hugo Award to be an active stamp of a void. If I see a book with the Hugo Award, I will now look it up before even considering reading it. Because if it's got the Hugo Award, it's probably shit. That's what that's done. The fifth season was so bad that it made me consider the Hugo Award a mark of failure. Second book. This is my number four. And it is Infinite Jest. Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace is a book about the entertainment industry and entertainment in general and the concept of media. It is the power of media. And it's an interesting concept done so very badly. Uh, It follows two large separate areas, a a tennis tennis club, a high-end tennis club, and a drug den, basically. And it kind of you know, flits between the two, whilst it tells this overly meandering uh, story that is intentionally cryptic and intentionally bloated. There is nothing of value in this book. This book tries to make out as if it's something special by being cryptic, by being overly allegorical, by being abstract, and by intentionally being obtuse. That's what this book is. It is intentionally trying to confuse you. It is intentionally trying to make it so that you have to spend more time reading it, and it's sickeningly long in the process. There's nothing uh, that this story does that couldn't have been done in a 200-page standard novel. The concept is not bad, but the book itself is so terribly written. And 
you get the impression that the whole purpose behind Infinite Jest is to just be a time sink. It's a challenge to read because it's boring and it's tedious and it's abstract allegory is so so strained and tenuous that it takes forever for you to actually work out what the fuck they're trying to say. So, when you get down to it, what this book is, is it's a badge of honour. It's a badge of honour for all the dude bro pricks who think that this is some kind of philosophical text because it's close to a thousand pages or more than a thousand pages, depending on which, which printing you've got. Um, I've seen it as low as 800 pages. It depends on which print you get, obviously. But it is an extremely long book that is just a mark of honour. You can claim you've read this and you have brownie points, basically. That's all that this is for. It is pseudo-intellectual trash. It is something that people read in order to boast that they've read it. And there's nothing else behind it. So, yeah, Infinite Jest. A steaming pile of shite. My number three choice. This one I'm cheating on a little. Because this isn't one book. This is the entire library of Cormac McCarthy. Cormac McCarthy is one of the most try-hard, dude-bro pieces of shite when it comes to authors I have ever seen. His books are intentionally overtly macho in ways that just feel painful. Like There are adaptations or film adaptations that take his stories and actually make them, you know, consumable. That they make them capable of being enjoyed. But the books themselves are just terrible. They are just awful, awful pieces of shite. They are pointlessly graphic, needlessly gory. They are... They... they have no, no attempt to display or project any kind of femininity whatsoever. There are, there, there are basically no women in any of them, um, and the women that are there are there as objects. Uh, this is written by someone who I honestly believe is genuinely misogynistic. And given how much I fucking hate woke uh, you know, grandstanding, for me to say that, it has to actually be the case. His books are boring. His books are painful to read. That they have no real texture to them. On top of that, actually reading the books, not listening to the audiobook or watching the film, ad film adaptation, requires genuine effort because Cormac McCarthy is fucking illiterate. The man cannot be asked to use punctuation. He doesn't bother with speech marks. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't bother to uh, actually state who's speaking to who. He just writes out dialogue as if it's part of the description. You're just supposed to get it. No, no, this is not a spoken word campfire story. You're an author. Learn to fucking write. So no, Cormac McCarthy is um, is crap. Um, it is again. Nothing more than, like Infinite Jest, an attempt for dude bro uh, assholes to claim that they've they've read something awesome. And he is given so, so much praise. Like, Cormac McCarthy's next book comes out, it will immediately get praise. It will it will get fawning reviews from so many different places because you know, he's, he's a modern classic author. No, no he's not. Most of his stories I've read better versions of from other authors. Seriously, The Road is probably his most famous story, and I can think of at least three different Stephen King uh, stories that have aspects of The Road done better. It's supposed to be the story of a father and son uh, through this dystopian world, and I got none of that. I got no... no feeling of desperation, no real feeling of connection. All I got was day-to-day -day drudgery and itemised listing. That's all that he does, and he doesn't punctuate anything properly, so it becomes genuinely hard to read. So that's Cormac McCarthy. 
a pretentious fucking douchebag. So from one pretentious douchebag to another pretentious douchebag, this one being a uh, being a frightening recluse who refuses to talk to people because, you know, you're an author, you've put your ideas out publicly, so, you know, become a hermit. That that's That'll make sure that all of the uh, all of the smooth brains out there will attach themselves to your books because they can't find anything about you and that makes you special and interesting. Ooh. Obviously, we're talking about Thomas Pynchon. <sighs> Gravity's Rainbow. This is my number two. And it was very nearly my number one. Gravity's Rainbow is just disgusting in every way. It is intentionally obtuse, pointlessly allegorical. It is way too long. Everything is written in the abstract. It It is impossible to read it and actually understand it first time round unless you already know what to expect. The whole book is filled with the most juvenile, pathetic humour you could possibly come across. It was denied one of the uh, the major literary awards because even though it was getting you know high ratings from some of the judges, others just outright refused to award it because there is a, literally a scene where people are eating shit, like fecal fetish. That's in this book. It's supposed to be funny. It's not. It's just disgusting, and it's constant. It is the most low brow toilet humor possible. The whole premise of this bizarre piece of wank of a book is that the main character whenever he has sex in various different cities, etc. in one of the world wars, whenever he has sex in, in one of the major cities, that's where one of the German bombs will land in the UK. That's the premise. It is so abstract and stupid that it doesn't really deserve even that description. Some of the uh, some, some of the, the abstract offshoots just go meandering off for pages at a time and have no real connection to the main story. It's supposed to be like stream of consciousness comedic abstract writing. It's not. It's just shite. I cannot understand why anyone enjoys this book. It's not funny. It's crass and pathetic. Um, I I remember watching an episode of The Simpsons where Lisa was going to like a high end uh, college, and she was you know reading highbrow literature, and there was this other girl that she was kind of hero worshiping who was also supposedly reading highbrow literature, and while they're getting changed in one of the locker rooms, she turns around and notices Gravity's rainbow sticking out of this girl's book, and she is deeply impressed that this girl's reading Gravity's Rainbow. And she turns around and goes, Ooh, you're reading Gravity's Rainbow. And the other girl goes, <laughs> Rereading? That is exactly the kind of person who would read Gravity's Rainbow. That kind of pretentious, narcissistic prick who, the, the very idea of reading Gravity's Rainbow is beneath them. Obviously, I'm rereading it because, you know, I've obviously read it before. I'm special. I'm better than you. That's the kind of person who reads this shite. Now that I know what it's about, now that I know how juvenile and disgusting and very, very sexual and, and toilet humour based this book is, the idea that Lisa would be even slightly um, impressed by someone reading this pile of complete and total pig shit makes no sense. Anyway, let's go on to number one in the top five most pretentious pieces of wank of a book you could ever get. And um, there is an honourable mention to this, and that's only because I haven't read this one. Um, the honourable mention is another book by the same author. My number one is Ulysses by James Joyce. And the honourable mention is Finnegan's Wake. The reason Finnegan's Wake is an honourable mention is I've only read a few pages of it. And at that point I went, fuck this shit and put it down. Ulysses 
is so intentionally difficult to read. It is so purposely abstract and bullshit in its writing style that in order to get anything out of it, you have to have bought the book, the new Bloomsday book, which explains and deciphers the fucking book in the first place. Ulysses... It's not even... It's not even a coherent story. It's just streams of consciousness bullshit. Right. It is, according to various different groups on online, um, it is... The, it has themes of remorse that runs through the book and addresses feelings associated with modern breaks, family and tradition. Uh, it's the... it uh, Another um, book analysis site claims that it has themes of love, sex, parenthood and nationality. Uh, others claim that uh, it inspires devotion, that once a year, thousands of people all over the world dress up like the characters, take the streets and read the book aloud. That's according to Ted, no, to TED.com. So, yay. It is just stream of consciousness, abstract bullshit, all strung together with no real through thought about a guy going through his life in Ireland. And nothing really happens. Everything is way too abstracted for it to make any fucking sense. You have to spend time reading it, rereading it, then go to other sources to get translations and get uh, the references that are purposely obtuse translated for you so that you can then read another source, you can understand what the fuck that sentence meant. It is purposely designed so that you can read it and then if you understood it, and only by doing fucking research will you understand it, you can then lord it over other people by making it seem like you're intelligent because you understood the hard book. You didn't. You didn't understand the hard book. You're just part of the problem. The whole purpose of this book, the whole point of this book, is the modern art of books. It is there so that people can go, oh yes, I understand this represents bloody blah 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 blah. You're just too stupid to understand it. You're just plebeians. You, you wouldn't get it. That's what it is. It's the modern art of novels. It is absolute shite. These books represent the very worst of what people call literary fiction. People will claim that literature can be divided into literary fiction and genre fiction. And literary fiction is valuable and important, and you, know, you really should you really should preserve this because this this has important things to say on the human condition. They love the phrase the human condition. And then there's genre fiction, which is all fucking fiction. Every piece of fiction ever belongs to a fucking genre. I don't care if it's sci-fi or fantasy or horror or romance or drama or crime or mystery. They are all genres. Every piece of fiction you've ever seen belongs to a genre. All of it. So when people present like real life, you know, slice of life dramas, that is a drama. That's the genre. Drama. It does not become literary fiction. That is nothing more than a pretentious label attached to books that are not sci-fi, fantasy or horror. Crime sometimes gets a, a pass. There's a, the occasional bit that, you know, crime and mystery uh, will get a pass. Thrillers very rarely do, but one or two might make it in. Uh, but yeah, it's so that they can, they can lord it over fantasy, sci-fi and horror. When fantasy and sci-fi are some of the most inventive and interesting and imaginative and creative forms of the fucking medium that exist. What takes more effort? What takes more imagination? What takes more genuine fucking talent? Writing a story about a person who lives in our world with our rules and our, our reality that lives in our time and, ex and examines their life through the lens of our political systems, our social dynamics, and our general our, our general life structure. Does that take more effort? Or does creating an entire fucking world with 
completely different laws of physics, completely different systems of governments, completely different uh, rules of society, uh, different uh, different political systems, different religious systems, uh, different everything. Everything is different. And then examining their, their thoughts, their feelings, their character. That takes way, way more creativity. So people who say literary fiction is better or more important or more valuable or higher than genre fiction are the epitome of the most pretentious, arrogant little fucking twats that read on the planet. If you, if you read literary, if you, in fact, if you divide your books into literary fiction and genre fiction, you are a cunt. You are a complete and total pretentious, arrogant, pseudo-intellectual cunt, and I want nothing to do with you. You are exactly the kind of pretentious prick that reads the five books I've just been talking about. My god, I hate this. I hate people who act like this. Ugh. So yeah, that's why I hate this, these books. These books are the biggest waste of your time, your energy, your emotional investment. There is nothing of fucking value here unless you genuinely think that you want to project yourself as some kind of literary expert. If you want to push yourself out as some kind of intellectual. If you think it'll impress the people around you that you've read Infinite Jest and that you've, you've read the books of Cormac McCarthy. If these things will impress people, you know, if you showing up with Ulysses and Gravity's Rainbow will make people go, ooh, he's, he's smart. He reads, he reads the hard books. Then sure, sure, but you're a fucking liar. You're a liar, you're a pseudo-intellectual prick. That's what you are. You're projecting yourself as some kind of intellectual when you have no actual intelligence to offer. You're about as intelligent as the guy who looks at a canvas on a wall with a red squiggle on it and goes, Oh, this is such an important piece of, of formative art that explains the very essence of, of humanity. No, it's fucking not. It's a squiggle on a canvas. Get over yourself. These books are the modern art of literature. They are shite, and if you like them, you should be ashamed of yourselves. And that's me done. Thanks for listening to this rant. I did warn you it was going to get extreme. I'll see you next video. Bye.